Hey there! Just hiking out here at Torrey Pines State Natural Reserve. They're uh, preserving some of those Torrey Pines, which you can't see. They're on the si other side of this hill here. Uh, but the state park is closed due to COVID. But the beach side is open. And we're not here to see pine trees. This isn't a biology channel. This is a geology channel. So as you can see, we got a lot of stuff we can explore. Let's see if we can find something interesting. So here we see a great distinction between mudstone and sandstone. Well, what's the story here? How did this happen? Well, the hypothesis here is an encroaching sandbar from offshore. I'm sorry, I'm sorry what? An encroaching sandbar? Oh yeah, an encroaching sandbar. Let's see if we can illustrate it. Okay, let's first uh, describe what we're working with here. Now bear with me and use your imagination. So this is land. Okay, this is a offshore lagoon and very shallow water, ocean water kind of comes in here. And this is a sandbar where the waves are breaking and pushing up sand, creating this sandbar. Now, the idea is 45 to 50 million years ago, either sea level was rising or the land was dropping and these big waves came and started pushing this sandbar or encroaching it up and over the top of that existing lagoon. Those lagoon deposits are now covered by all the sand. And that's what you have right here. So this is the lagoon deposits right here. And then it turns to sand. It encroached and covered the original lagoon deposits. Oh, but do I have a surprise for you in that sandstone layer that I'd like to show you. Follow me. Okay. It's it's right up. Wait, you know what? I need to do something first. Okay, let's get some context first. Um, so obviously the ecology or just the environment of that lagoon is gonna change, right? As the sea level rises and the sand's coming in, different animals are gonna be pushed out and other animals are gonna be like, great, this is a great environment for me to move in. So if we go back here, here's the mudstone layer. Then the sand starts encroaching and look at around this point, we keep going up, keep going up. Oh man, look at this fossiliferous layer of clam shells and oyster shells. They were loving life at that moment. And you can see they kind of dissipate up there. So there was a point in time when these oysters and these clams were just loving life. And it's all retained right here in the sandstone layer. This is why geology is awesome. Here's some more footage of that fossiliferous layer. That's a term that geologists came up with that if you have a rock unit that's just riddled with fossils like this, you call it fossiliferous. It's one of the funnest words to say. Can you say that with me? Fossiliferous. So retained in the geology here are the sandbar encroachment and then the lagoon encroachment and then the sandbar to lagoon. So you have alternating layers of mudstone, shale, sandstones, all right here to kind of tell you what was happening in the distant past. And here's a better shot showing the sand encroachment and the lagoon en encroachment retained in the geology here at Torrey Pine State Natural Reserve. I'm gonna go ahead and let this cliff face speak for itself. Look at that. Are you kidding me? Beautiful layering on here. We got unconformities. We got different levels of iron oxide in these layers, giving us different orange tone. We've got Tefani on top. Ooh, this looks like the Neapolitan ice cream of geology. Oh, check this out. We got our fossiliferous layer here. When them clams and oysters were just all fat and happy, all retained in one cliff face for me to geek out on my work. B E A U. Well, thanks for joining me here at Torrey Pines State Natural Reserve. There's a lot more stories in the layers of these rocks that I didn't even touch. 
I barely scratched the surface out here. I'm definitely gonna be back. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't do these. This is way beyond my talent.